Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to have a look at a beer from another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. So from what I understand, this brewery is a very well established and very well respected brewery and I have seen their beers around before, namely on the supermarket shelves in Scotland, but those versions of the beers were actually contract brewed in England and I was always thinking along the lines of if I was going to try the beers from this brewery, I wanted the ones that were brewed over in the US. So we finally managed to get a hold of one of these and I have to say I'm very curious to see how it turns out because it is a little bit of a kind of New England cult classic this one from what I understand. So fingers crossed it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head to the city of Boston in Massachusetts in New England in the northeast of the US and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Harpoon Brewery. So this one is the Harpoon IPA it comes in at 6% ABV and I think you know what style this one is but this apparently was one of the first locally brewed IPAs in the whole of New England which is quite interesting you might also be noticing that this beer uh, the can is a little bit taller and I was a bit confused by this actually. So this one is a 568 milliliter can, also known as one British Imperial pint. And obviously the American pint is quite a bit smaller than that at 473 milliliters. So I did wonder about this beer after I bought it and I wondered, oh, could this have been contract brewed? In England again but apparently no it's been imported here into Sweden by Galatea and its origin is the US so yeah in that case I'm wondering if it's the the fact that it's been brewed in Boston that means they use a kind of a British imperial pint can because of all the Irish influence and things up there so yeah wonder why it's in a 568 milliliter can but anyway uh, that's something that um, we'll find out another day, I'm sure. But if you do happen to know, let me know about that in the comments section below. But we got this beer here in Sweden as part of the Tilfelig temporary sortiment through System Bolaga on the 13th of July 2021. And I think it cost me about 35 Swedish kroner, so that's €3.50, uh, about £3 sterling, and I guess somewhere in the region of $4, $4.25 for the can. So uh, yeah, for an import beer... That is very, very reasonable, in fact, especially when it's in a 568ml uh, British pint can. But uh, yeah, very, very curious to see how this one turns out. A little bit of a cult classic in the New England states, from what I understand. So nice to be able to review it for you here on the channel, finally. So let's crack on with this review then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Harpoon Brewery. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Harpoon Brewery. So Harpoon Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Boston in Massachusetts in uh, New England in the northeast of the US and the company was founded back in 1986 by Dan Canary, Rich Doyle and George Leggetti. So they were long-term friends that just loved to enjoy a few beers together. They used to go out drinking quite often from what I understand and they were friends in university. But they found that their choices of beer in New England were very limited at this time. And having travelled to Europe and experienced the beer culture over here, they decided that they actually wanted to brew some beer for themselves and kind of just diversify uh, the market actually. But in June of 1987, they converted a warehouse space on the Boston waterfront and they brewed the first Harpoon Ale there. But at this point, they were joined by Russ Heisner, and it was actually... Um, he was a graduate of the University of California at Davis Fermentation Sciences program. He was the one that developed the recipe for the original Harpoon Ale, and I think that is a beer that I will need to try at some point as well. But the first years of the brewery were very rocky, and they actually came very close to closing, in fact. But the turning point for them was when they held their own Oktoberfest, and it went very, very well, and it really raised awareness of the brewery, actually. But a little bit later on, 
1993, they introduced this beer, the IPA, and this would become very quickly their most popular and then flagship beer. But they continued to grow over the following years, and then in 2000, they purchased the former Catamount Brewery in Windsor up in Vermont, and uh, they've continued to grow even more over the last few years. I do believe the original brewery is still in operation as well. But in 2014, they became 48% employee-owned after they created an ESOP uh, scheme, uh, basically, a sale. They basically sold the company to the employees, if you like, and this was to buy out Rich when he wanted to retire. So these guys are 48% uh, employee owned which I think is pretty cool. From what I understand Dan really wanted the brewery to remain in Boston and that was the main reason that they used the ESOP program but uh, as of July 2021 these guys have produced 780 different kinds of beers according to Untapped and uh, yeah I think there's only a few of them actually make it really outside of the local vicinity and things like that so I think in their bars and things that they have uh, that's where you'll find a lot of the experimental brews and stuff like that from this brewery. But uh, yeah that's all I can really tell you about how Harpoon Brewery for the moment. For a brewery that were so well established there was a surprisingly little information available about their kind of brewing capacity and uh, stuff like this but I think that is a fairly succinct history of, uh, of this brewery. So yeah that's what we want for the video but like I say that's all I can tell you for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all those different beers that they've done. But uh, yeah, I think it is about time for us to have a look at this beer. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, the artwork is pretty straightforward, but I think it's kind of eye-catching, you know, the blue and uh, an orange in there. And it says, yeah, New England's original IPA. Like I say, one of the first locally brewed IPAs in the New England states uh, in America. But yeah, apparently 6% ABV and 42 IBUs. So yeah, maybe this is the or origins of the lower bitterness that you find amongst the uh, among the the likes of you know Treehouse Trillium and Lawson's Finest Liquids and Alchemist and Hill Farmstead and all of these guys so maybe that's the reason but uh, yeah this beer as I say was introduced back in 1993 one of the first locally brewed IPAs in the whole of New England and apparently it's just Cascade in this so this should be really interesting a proper old school beer this one like we said 568 milliliter can this is going to go down very nicely. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. Then I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So yeah, let's go for it then. Let's do this. So 6% IPA, the Harpoon IPA from Boston in Massachusetts. Although does it say whether this one was brewed? Just says, yeah, Boston, Massachusetts and Wind Windsor, Vermont. See, it's an interesting thing that because I noticed that in America, when breweries have two different facilities, such as Sierra Nevada and things, they just put both things down. They don't actually seem to have to tell you where this originated, whereas in Europe you would have to say what you know town and city and things that it originated in, by law, of course. But uh, yeah, just something that I've noticed with a few different American beers. But um, yeah, anyway, this looks quite nice, I have to say. So, um, before the head disappears, I think we've got about maybe about 60% of the beer in the glass. But um, yeah, you can see before the head disappears, this one's poured with a lovely kind of cream tinted head there. It is quite a bumpy head actually, as you can maybe see if I bring the glass a little bit closer towards the camera. But you can see the color of this beer is a lovely, very light amber actually. But yeah, it's crystal clear, um, although it does seem to be sweating a little bit on the glass but you can see it is quite a clear beer this one one or two big bubbles sticking up to uh, you know head sticking to the side of the glass and quite a few going up towards the bottom of that head there but i mean overall it looks really nice and this is the kind of color you would expect from uh, an ipa i do suspect this one is going to be more of a kind of west coast ipa if that one makes sense and of course this whole west coast ipa term has been coined a little bit more since the emergence of the new england ipas so yeah it's a little bit awkward i guess to use that particular term in this video but we probably will use it a couple of times but yeah remember the color of your beer is dependent on one the type of malts that you use this determines the magnitude of the color two the length of your wort boil the longer you boil the wort the more the sugar is caramelized and thus you get a darker color of beer an IPA like this is probably going to undergo a wort boil of between 60 to 90 minutes uh, and then any uh, uh, any adjuncts or barrel aging that you uh, do to the beer as well will uh, actually affect the the colour too but that usually comes into play when we're talking about sour beers but uh, yeah in terms of a more west coast style IPA I guess we could say this one certainly looks the part lovely kind of medium 
amber color. So uh, yeah, curious to see what this one has in store for us. Nothing more we can really say about the appearance of this one. And as I say, nothing surprising about it when we consider what sort of style of beer this is. But let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with it. Oh, yeah, it does smell very nice, actually. It reminds me, it does remind me of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It really does. But yeah, this one's got a lovely, almost kind of laggery type biscuity thing, biscuity note to it. It's really, that's really interesting, actually. But uh, yeah, the backbone of this beer is really interesting. The first impression I have of this one is that it's going to be a very kind of nice, drinkable and still quite sweet uh, malty. IPA so yeah this will be this will be really interesting to try um, but yeah let's break that aroma down for you a little bit more then so on the uh, malty side of things you can feel that nice kind of brown wholemeal bready character just going right across the middle of your palate there's a lovely kind of uh, kind of bread crusty note to it as well and then you can smell on top of that the kind of brown bread thickening out a wee bit so it's kind of interesting as I say one or two little woody elements in there as well. You can smell that. But like I say, brown, you know, sort of brown bread, a little bit of white bread in there, some bread crust, and you do have a wee bit of brown sugar. There's maybe a wee teeny little bit of caramel to this one. Certainly some McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of elements. I'm not sure how good a reference that is for Americans, right enough. And um, they probably, you know, they probably describe it as more of a sort of cookie thing over there. But um, yeah, the aroma of this beer is very very nice and very inviting actually it's certainly right up my street i do enjoy a little bit of a kind of brown sugary um sort of ipa actually and i've told you this in previous reviews with these west coast style uh, ipas i think there's two different directions you can take these they can be a little bit more oily and caramelly or they can be a wee bit more bready and biscuity and this one actually feels like it's going to be right in the middle of the, uh, the spectrum of these two things so uh yeah i think this should be quite interesting to try but yeah i don't think there's too much else that we really need to say about the malt base in this one. Brown bread, white bread, bit of bread crust, little touch of a, a woody undertone, then sweet caramel and uh, a more biscuity, cookie-like uh, aroma. So yeah, the malty side of this beer goes together very, very nicely, I have to say. But yeah, on the hoppy, uh, on the hoppy side of things then, but uh, I would say on the hoppy side of things, there's a nice little bit of, uh, of earthiness to this one, for sure. You're always going to get a little bit of that with Cascade. But you've got a lovely smooth and still slightly bright floral aromaticity with this one. Cascade is a very distinctive hop, and I've got, you know, very fond memories of Cascade. One of my local beers back home in the, the Scottish motherland, uh, Shehalian. It's a Czech-style pilsner with, um, Pilsen, I should say, a Czech-style Pilsen lager with uh, a bunch of Cascade in it, and it's absolutely lovely. Shehalian from Harvest and Brewery, check that beer out. But yeah, Cascade um, gives me a lot of happy memories, I have to say. But you can smell that straight away with this one. You've got that lovely, bright but still smooth floral aromaticity, and you get that lovely kind of grassy character out of it as well. So on the fruity side of things, you do get a little tiny hint of grapefruit, but I've always found that Cascade is a little bit more kind of oily and almost very slightly figgy and red fruity in a sense. So yeah, a little bit of grapefruit to this one. But as I say, you get that nice kind of juicier, figgy, black currant, almost black currant, I don't know if black currant's the right descriptor for it, but you certainly get a bit of a softer, kind of red fruity character out of um, out of this beer, which I uh, can really appreciate. So yeah, it smells like a really nice kind of classic beer, this one. It's almost got a little touch of an English IPA character too, as well, with all the kind of breadiness and the slight graininess that it has, but the hops are most definitely American. You know, there's no mistake in Cascade. Uh, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, the aroma of this is really nice. It just strikes me as being very, very old school. So I have to say, I'm just very curious to see how this beer tastes now. So I think it is about time that we have a little look at this beer and see how we go. So as I always say, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. But it is very, very inviting actually. So yeah, let's go for it. This one is the Harpoon IPA coming in at 6% ABV. Apparently the original uh, New England locally brewed IPA. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck into this one and see how we go. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, that's very nice. Straight away with this one, you know, I'm going to say you can see why a beer like this would gain quite a lot of popularity because it's 
a nice, so it's almost like a nice introduction to the style actually. And this is one of the things I always enjoy when you go back to the likes of the Sierra Nevada Paleo or, uh, or something like this. It's just very, very nicely done. So thumbs up to, um, to Harpoon Brewery for this. As I say, it's always quite cool to try classics that you can't normally get your, get your hands on. But um, yeah, I think this is really, really cool actually. Um, it's just very nice and very easy to drink. So happy that I got the chance to try this one. But I will say, this beer does actually build up a fair wee bit of bitterness the further you go into the aftertaste with it. So it's kind of interesting that, because when it says 40 IBUs, I potentially would have guessed that it would be more than that. And remember, IBUs uh, are my weakest point when it comes to beer, beer uh, viewed by quite some margin, I would say. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this beer for you and describe it a wee bit more kind of succinctly. seem to like that word in the reviews these days as well succinctly but yeah so multi backbone of this beer then straight away across that middle third of your palate and the back third of your palate you can feel that sort of grainy brown bready character just kind of taking hold if you like if we focus on that middle third of your palate you can feel that in the front half of that uh, in the front half of that uh, middle third of your palate you can feel a little bit of a woody undertone and maybe even a teeny teeny little bit of a slightly kind of stronger, uh, greeny, bread crusty character there, but at either end, at either end of the, um, at either end of the middle third of your palate, there's certainly a wee bit more kind of bread crusty quality too, but it really mellows out very nicely actually. And I think having that little bit of greeniness builds a good bridge with the bitter characters that the beer has too, and we'll come back to that later. But yeah, on top of that kind of greeny, wholemeal, brown bready layer, you can feel there's a very nice sort of smooth. Uh, slightly smoother and slightly thicker brown bready character on top of this, which I really like. So, yeah, the um, the aroma in this one, I think, is just really, really nice. In fact, um, I say the aroma, the flavour, it's the malty side of things. My brain is terrible these days, guys. Early onset Alzheimer's or something probably, but um, yeah. On top of that, you get a um, as I say, you get a th that thicker brown bready layer, and that really sweetens up a wee bit. Uh, you can feel it just sort of thickening up and sweetening up the further you go into the aftertaste. But on top of that layer, of course, you get the the kind of brown sugary elements there. So it's almost like in the middle of third of your palate, you've got a nice oval there, and in the dead centre of that, you've got a kind of concentrated caramel. But as you move further out from that, it feels a little bit more like a toasted caramel. And as you reach the extremities of that middle third of your palate, it's a little bit more kind of biscuity like, a little bit of a McVitie's digestive grainy biscuity kind of character that you're getting out of this one. And I really like that about this beer as well. Of course, the brown sugary elements in this will be partially from some kind of, um, you know, maybe crystal or um, two-row malt, which it does taste kind of like that actually in this beer. I think this will, this will have a bit of crystal or two-row malt, and I really love those American malt types actually. They're quite different from, you know, the caramunics and carapils and things like that that we have over here in Europe. It's just the texture of them really feels different. But uh, yeah, the the quality of this beer, I think, is, um, is very nice actually. And for a beer that I'm assuming is produced on a pretty big scale, um, it comes across very nicely actually, but I think we've covered the middle third of the palette um, in this beer pretty well, so we should focus on the other parts of it. So yeah, back third of your palette then. Border region between middle third and back third of your palate. Again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there, a wee bit more of an intense bread crust, you know, but then the base of that back third of your palate, the graininess from the brown bready base is a little bit more intense but you can also feel that the bready character on top of that kind of thickens up a wee bit and on top of that you can feel the more airy kind of yeasty uh, notes coming out of the beer as well so you get a little bit of that sweet kind of um that sort of sweet brown bready character as well so i really like how that goes together in this one too but yeah on the um on the back uh, at the back of that uh, middle third of your palate, you can feel that the um, 
you can feel the flavour, the sort of height of the flavour of this beer is a bit taller and then it condenses down as you come further forward. So then as you push into the middle third of your palate, you can feel the flavours are a little bit more kind of condensed together. So yeah, I do like that, that you've got that more airy yeasty note on the um, on the back third of your palate as well. It gives the beer a really nice kind of contrast actually. Uh, but yeah, you can feel that spectrum that you always get, the kind of um, more bitey, smoother flavours, if you like, at the back of the palate, and the beer just gradually transitions to the sweeter things on the front uh, on the front uh, third of your palate, as we say. But uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, the middle and back the middle and back third of your palate on this one covered quite well. Let's focus on the hoppy part of the beer. So back corners of your palate, then you can certainly feel a wee bit of earthiness, and you're always going to get that from cascading. It's a little touch herbal before you move further forward, and then as you come forward along the sides of your palate, you can feel that nice deep sort of floral aromaticity. It's almost a wee bit kind of dank and resiny in a sense and it does have a wee bit of spice right on the kind of front uh, corners of your palate too. So I really like that about this beer as well. But um, yeah, the the hoppy side of things in this one is really nicely executed as I said. But around the front curve of your palate you can feel a little bit of a lighter grassy sort of thing and there is a wee touch of, uh, of zestiness there. But um, yeah, we fly trying to get, we teeny fly trying to get into my can. But yeah, um, as I say, around the front cover of the palate, a nice little bit of a zesty grassiness there. But front third of your palate then, border region between front third and middle third of your palate in this uh, in this one is that um, you can feel that little bit of bready build up again and a wee bit more of an intense bread crust. And then underneath that, there's a bit of a sort of brown bready character in there as well. But um, yeah. I think the um, the the base flavour of this of that one is um, is really quite nice actually, but um, yeah I think that slightly malty backbone that you get on the front third your palate is nice, but just a smooth and almost slightly sweet brown bread in there. But on top of that, of course, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So let's examine that. If you go to the back of that front third of your palate, you can feel that slightly stronger and more intense grapefruit, but as you move further forward, you can feel that that just mellows out a wee bit, and as you move into the front half of that uh, front third of your tongue, you certainly get a little bit more of a kind of, that, that sort of slightly figgy, um, almost, very, almost very lightly black currently note from uh, Cascade. I always, I've always enjoyed Cascade for that. It can give you the big danky flavours, but it can also give you this really light, you kind know, of, very slight red fruity note and um, you certainly get that in this one, a wee touch of fig and a wee bit of a kind of, uh, a wee bit of fig and a wee bit of a kind of just, you know, black currently sort of thing. So love it, absolutely love it. Yeah, this is a really nice beer. I mean, as a sessioner, if you're going to have a few, a few like that, this is a good one to have in the States. I mean, you know, having some, something like this is probably the equivalent to having, you know, like uh, Leffe Blonde or, um, you know, Pilsner Urkel or one of the, you know, like Augustina Hellas or something like that. You know, I get the feeling that this beer is kind of like the New England equivalent of uh, of these sort of things over here in uh, in Europe, if you like. But uh, yeah, it's nice stuff, definitely. But uh, yeah, really like how this one goes together. The fruitiness, incidentally, is kind of nice and oily as well, and I really like that about this one, but that front third of your palate really does sweeten up and you can feel just sweet bready notes underneath that too. But um, yeah, let's focus on the, um, let's focus on the mouthfeel now. I think we've said everything we really need to about the flavour of this beer, but yeah, um, mouthfeel wise, I think this is a pretty mid-body beer. I think it's right in the middle of the spectrum. The carbonation is quite smooth and the beer has a wee bit of an oily slickness to it, which I very much appreciate as well. But on the, um, hoppy side of things, we know that it's 40 IBUs, I probably would have guessed that, it, I actually would have guessed that it was maybe a little bit higher than that, I would have maybe thought about 50 for this, but as I say, um, you know, the, the power of suggestion is a wonderful thing, I don't know, I might have said something completely different, but yeah, IBUs are my weakest point of beer review and by quite some distance, like I said, but uh, yeah, the malty backbone in this one is nice, it's got a bit of graininess, a bit of smoothness and also a lovely little bit of sweetness. And yeah, you've also got a kind of a lovely kind of more oily, juicy, fruity character to this one as well, which I think is nice. It highlights the Cascade hop really well. And as I say, this is a proper old school um, IPA, this one. So it is, if you like Sierra Nevada Pale, I think you will uh, probably enjoy this one as well. But uh, yeah, I think.
think this is a really nicely executed beer and it does have a wee bit more of a kind of the, the malty character in this one just strikes me as a little bit more English you know it's got a little bit more breadiness to it and a wee bit more graininess whereas a lot of the American IPAs uh, that you'll find such as you know even if you think of like Pliny the Elder which leans towards that more bready kind of side of the spectrum that's a bit more of a kind of smooth white bready thing this one has a wee bit more of a brown bready grainy character to it that's probably what um, sets it apart in a sense but uh, yeah, I like this one. I have to say, I'm glad that they used the, the British Imperial Pint can for this as well, because the rest of this beer is going to go down a treat. Let's just say that. But uh, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. So uh, yeah, let's let's leave it there. So yeah, this was the Harpoon IPA, coming in at 6% ABV, the first locally brewed IPA in the New England region in the northeast of the US. Definitely cool to get this one reviewed for you on the channel finally. And if you do have any other kind of sort of cult classic suggestions for American craft beer reviews, do let me know about those in the comments section below. I'm, there's numerous beers over there that uh, we don't come across all that commonly over here in Europe, but this one was definitely cool to kind of uh, check off the list if you like. But uh, yeah, lovely beer this, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink that again. No way, uh, absolutely. That would have gone very wrong if I said no way. But yeah, um, but once again, yeah, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Harpoon Brewery as well. I do hope that I can get a hold of the original Harpoon Ale at some point. I do wonder if now that we have this one, maybe we'll get the Harpoon Ale across here in Sweden at some point. And if it does arrive, I will take a look at that because I think that could be very interesting. Otherwise, when I make over to New England, hopefully next year, We'll see about getting that reviewed for you. But yeah, awesome stuff this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. So thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Harpoon Brewery as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next review. Slange it, skull. Cheers to the famous Harpoon IPA from Boston in Massachusetts in America. Skull.